How could a bloody civil war actually spark a scientific revolution? It sounds crazy, right? But the English Civil War, that brutal conflict from 1640 to 1651, did just that. It wasn't the war itself, but the chaos it created that paradoxically cleared the path for modern science in England. Before the war, everything was controlled by the king and the church. They decided what you could print, what you could say, and what you could teach. The universities were stuck in the past, endlessly debating ancient Greek philosophers like Aristotle, but then, war broke out between the royalists and the parliamentarians. Suddenly, the old authorities crumbled, the courts that enforced censorship were abolished, leading to an explosion of new books and pamphlets. People were free to debate radical ideas about politics, religion, and even the nature of the universe itself, the universities, which were royalist strongholds, were shaken up by the victorious parliamentarians. This broke the stranglehold of old, outdated thinking. Many of the parliamentarians, especially the Puritans, were big fans of a new way of thinking promoted by Francis Bacon. His idea was simple. Don't just trust old books. Go out and test things for yourself. They believed that studying God's creation nature through experiments was a form of worship. Plus, they saw the practical benefits. This new experimental philosophy could improve farming, medicine, and navigation. This mindset was a perfect match for budding scientists like the brilliant Robert Boyle and a young Christopher Wren. During this period of upheaval, they found powerful allies who were eager to support their research. As the political and religious arguments grew more toxic, thinkers and scientists looked for neutral ground. They started forming clubs and societies in London, meeting in places like Gresham College. It didn't matter if you were an Anglican or a Puritan. If you were interested in experiments and observation, you were welcome. Their motto could have been show me the proof, not the ancient text. This network of curious minds became the direct forerunner of one of the most important scientific institutions in history, the Royal Society of London. When the monarchy was restored in 1660, the new king, Charles II, was a fan of science. He gave the society a royal charter, making science a prestigious and respected activity. Their official motto, nullius in verba, means take nobody's word for it. It was a direct challenge to the old way of thinking, an attitude forged in the fires of the Civil War. So, the English Civil War didn't cause the scientific revolution, but it acted as a powerful accelerator. It broke the chains of old authority, promoted a hands-on, experimental approach, and created the space for scientists to collaborate freely. The chaos of war, in a strange twist of fate, helped England become a world leader in science, setting the stage for the modern world we live in today. Thanks for watching. If you found this surprising, give us a like and subscribe for more hidden stories from history.